So I, I totally burned the barbecue chicken. Uh, I totally burned it. I mean, it told me to put it on there for 350 degrees for 20 minutes and then flip it. And so I just I walked away for just a moment. And when I came back, the flames were shooting out of the gas grill. I mean, they were just, uh, and, and I opened it up very slowly and to the side. And as I looked inside, that chicken had suddenly turned from nasty, pasty white chicken to, to burnt, crusty, black as could be on the top, um, on fire chicken. I, I burnt the barbecue chicken. The flames were shooting out. The fire was too hot and it was, it was consuming that chicken. The flames were too hot. Well, for a moment, as we get started, I would like for you to turn in, in your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 1. All right, so go ahead and turn there, 1 Peter chapter 1. As you're turning there, I want to give you two quick announcements, uh, actually three quick announcements as we get started. And so, uh, so go ahead, find 1 Peter chapter 1. The countdown will begin, and then we'll get started in just a moment. Well, let me begin by saying, Happy Mother's Day. Now, on Sunday, May the 10th, 2020, is when Mother's Day will be. But we want to invite you already for you and your family to come and join us at Drive-In Church right there at the parking lot next door to McMillan's. And we want to invite you to come on that Mother's Day um, to just spend a moment as we celebrate our moms. Uh, some of you may want to come and, and be prepared to take family pictures. Uh, we're going to be able to do that on that day. We'll put you in a frame right inside of your car. And so we'll still be able to socially distance one another, but enjoy that time together. So uh, Sunday, May the 10th, 2020, uh, services will begin at 1030 a.m. Uh, if you'd like to come early, we'll be able to take your picture already. And so we would love for you and your family to join us. Um, it'll just be a celebration, a day that we gather together and just thank the Lord. Um, and so we hope that you'll be able to join us on Sunday, May the 10th, um, 2020 as Westside and our family, our church family and our community is coming to enjoy that time together. So hopefully you'll be able to join us. Looking forward to seeing you there on Sunday, May the 10th, 2020. All right, Lord bless you guys. See you soon. All right. Hey, Pastor Marcus Rosa from Westside Emmanuel Baptist Church here in Bogalusa. Are you wanting to uh, call a penalty on this COVID-19 because it has messed up your graduation for 2020? That's right. If you're a graduating senior this year for class of 2020, we know that this whole disease and this virus and everything has messed up your year. All the things that you were looking forward to have kind of been stripped away. But you know what? We want to honor you on May the 24th, 2020 at 1030 a.m. We've been meeting at the Dirt Cheap parking lot right next door to McMillan's. And during this time, we, we've had a great crowd of folks who've gathered together to celebrate the life we have in Jesus Christ. Well, you know what? On Sunday, May 24th, 2020, we want to celebrate you. That's right. If you are a graduating senior, we want to honor you by honking horns and allow you to come through the middle of our uh, of our time together there in the parking lot for you to be honored, kind of like a little parade. We'll have you drive around the parking lot there and let people honor you and honk their horns in celebration of this important time of your life. And so if you're a parent, or if you're a graduating senior, we want you to message us. Let us know some information about you. We would love a graduating uh, graduate picture so that we can put it in our pre-service countdown. Um, we want to honor you in a certain way. And so um, we want to give you more information. So if you could contact us even right now, let us know that you're graduating. Let us know that you are a senior this year, class of 2020. And so let us know. This is open for not only our church uh, graduating seniors, but the entire community. But we need to know. Now here's the deal. If you come, you can come just as you are, but you've got to stay in your car. We'll still be observing social distancing and, and just making sure that everybody's taken care of. But we want you as a graduating senior to be honored on that day. So for our seniors, we would love for you to uh, maybe get into the back of a, of a pickup truck or if you've got a convertible, you can kind of wave like that. Or maybe you just got a car and you want to decorate the side of that car. And so your family can come and sit in that vehicle with you. Uh, we want to make sure that you're out there and you're honored. We'll still observe social distancing and all, uh, but we definitely want to recognize you on that special day. So you can come as you are 
but you got to stay in your car. And so seniors, we're going to honor you uh, on this very day. We're going to honk those horns just for you because we're tired of all the things that have been taken away in your life during this time. But we just want to be a special blessing to you. So come on, join us Sunday, May 24th, 2020. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this year's VBS is going to be a little different than in the years past because this year, instead of coming to the church, the church is coming to your home. It's going to be an awesome time at Vacation Bible School. Sunday through Thursday, June 7th through the 11th, each night at 6 p.m., we're going to be having a virtual VBS as we take, uh, as we blast off for mission control right there in your home. We will have crafts and music, Bible stories. We'll even have a rec challenge each night for you and your family. And then on the end, on June 14th, Sunday, June 14th, we're going to have a family service where we're going to focus on our kids. And so if you're ready for VBS, virtual VBS coming soon, if you're ready to blast off for mission control, then don't forget, on Sunday through Thursday, June 7th through the 11th, each night at 6 p.m., VBS is coming your way. All right, so welcome. Thank you for, uh, for, for, for joining us this evening for our Wednesday time in the Word. And if you've got your Bible, would you turn to 1 Peter chapter 1? Uh, as you're turning to 1 Peter chapter 1, Tony and I had, have been going through the book of 1 Peter. And when I read this the other night, I was like, boy, this is a word from the Lord for you and I. And so uh, if, if you're here with us tonight, would you just write in the comments below, would you give us a thumbs up or just say who you are, where you're from? Um, and let's just greet each other for a moment as we're turning to the book of 1 Peter chapter 1. All right, so 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in, in verse 3. Okay, 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 3. I'm going to read out the New King James Version. You follow along in the version that you have before you. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our who? Of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not, not fade away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time now look what it says in verse 6 this is what we're going to focus on verse 6 and following in this you greatly rejoice though now for a little while if need be you have been grieved by various trials that now watch this, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is what? Tested by fire may be found uh, to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, you love. And though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice, with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Let's pray for a moment. Father, I just come and I, I, I in the, the matchless and beautiful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, pray right now, Father, that you would show us that in the various trials that we go through, the testing as it were by fire, that Father, you are at work and that there is a, a process and there's a product and there is a, a purpose behind our pain. And so Lord, I just pray right now in the name and the beautiful name of Jesus Christ that you would bless those who are watching us this evening that they might draw closer to you in Jesus name, amen. Amen. Well look, before we get started and kind of dive into God's word this evening, um, appreciate those of you who are just now joining us. I, I want you to listen to, uh, to some family of mine. This here is Jordan Millar, all the way from Huntsville, Alabama. And so uh, Jordan, I've known him since, well really since he's been born. I've known his family and, and, and you know, Hawaiians, we just, we just kin folk. And so here is Jordan singing a song that says, you know what, it may look like right now that I'm surrounded by trials and, and flames and issues, but in the end I can know that I am surrounded by the matchless, glorious name of Jesus Christ. And so listen for a moment, sing along with him as he leads us tonight. There's a table that you prepare for me In the presence of my enemies It's a body and blood to shed for me This is how I fight my battle
like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. May look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. May look like I'm surrounded, but I'm Amen. Would, would you say a uh, thumbs up or a wow real quick? Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you all for joining us once again. Um, in 1 Peter chapter 1 is where we're at. You'll notice in verse 7. All right, go ahead and turn there. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 7. In verse 6 it talks about all of these, these trials that we have gone through if need be. And so if we're going through these trials, maybe it's because we need to go through these right now. Uh, but if you look at verse 7, it says this, this, this phrase, this idea that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by, by fire. Though it is tested by fire. In the book of Isaiah and Malachi and, and, and numerous other places in the Bible, it uses this idea of a refiner's fire. Now, now, those of you who know me, you know that I'm probably not the one to be speaking about, you know, technical stuff and, and things that involve like hammers and tools and all that crazy stuff. But, but I've done a little bit of study and it's interesting to me that what a refiner would do is that they would take a, 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 a you, you'll see it on the screen here. They, they would take and, and dig into the earth and they would find, um, you know, a block of, of, of metal material, rocks, whatever, and, and they would begin to, to, to purify that. Um, and, and it's not just by, by chiseling and the hammer, but they would do it by, by fire. And they would take and, and after a while they, they find, a, a, you know, let, let, let's just say silver, for example, or gold. They would take that and they would, they would begin to, to heat it up to a molten state where, where what it would end up happening is, is that as they, they heat this metal, the, the dross, the, the impurities will actually begin to rise to the top and the refiner, as he would just put that heat on, that refiner, all those impurities that would come to the top, he would actually one by one begin to, to remove those, begin to take those away. Uh, there, there's a famous preacher by the name of Charles Spurgeon. He said this, um, I owe more to the fire and the hammer and the file than to anything else in the Lord's workshop. I owe more to the, the fire and the hammer and the file than anything else in the Lord's workshop. You say, what is he saying? See, Spurgeon understood, and I hope that you understood this tonight, that, that trials, when they need to come into our life, and there, there are times that trials come into our life, those trials and the, the heat of those trials begin to bring to the surface some things that the Lord says, I want to take those things away. Let me ask you, have you in this time of going through these trials, and it's, it's, it's extended a little bit longer than we want it to, but in the times of going through these trials, has anything begun to surface to the top? Maybe some anger issues, maybe some trust issues, maybe some fear issues, maybe some things that, you know what, you've realized Boy, when things begin to, to heat up and press in on my life, then I'm not really sure what's going on. I'm not really sure that I like what's going on. And those things that are, are coming up to the surface, uh, those, those sins, those, the, the, those impurities, those things that are not like Jesus, when those things have been coming to the top, uh, it, it's been scary for me. 
been scared for my family. I've been scared for those who have had to work with, and, and even if I'm not working, those who are I'm surrounded by. Uh, you know, tonight the Bible says, look, that, that the Lord will use these trials, the testing of our faith, that in the end it will be more precious than gold that perishes, uh, that we may be found to praise, honor, and, and glory at the revelation of, of Jesus Christ. That, that heat that the Lord is allowing in our life right now is bringing to the surface a lot of things that we may not like. So I'm going to look for a moment at what that means and how this changes our life when we understand that there's a, a purpose behind these trials, that those sins that are being brought to the surface are things that the Lord wants to remove. Uh, but my baby girl had a real interesting perspective on, on the difficult times, on the trying times, on those times that we have to depend on the Lord like right now. So for a moment, um, as you're continuing to look at 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 3 and, and following, uh, would you listen as she kind of shares the word of testimony tonight? God knew you before you knew yourself. God knew you before you were even thought of. And He made you perfect just the way you are. And He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your life. And there's just so many things in your life that God has in store for you. And I know it's hard because there's hardship and there's always a struggle of, well, if God really loved me, why would he do this to me? But God only brings you to things that he knows you can handle. And God brings you to things that are hard so that you can rely on him and he can get you through it. So that you can rely on him and he can get you through it. Sometimes in life, things won't always be easy. And that's not always God's fault. God has, God's not going to let somebody's life be smooth sailing because if somebody's life was smooth sailing, they wouldn't need God because their life would be perfect. But there is no such thing as a perfect life, but there is such thing as a perfect God. But there is no such thing as a perfect life, but there is such thing as a perfect God. And God will never, ever fail you. And even when you think that life is just so hard, you just have to keep pushing because God always has a plan and there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, especially when it comes to God, especially when it comes to God. But there is no such thing as a perfect life, but there is such thing as a perfect God, but there is such thing as a perfect God. Amen. And so, um, so we, we definitely serve a, a perfect God. Um, even in the middle of our trials, we, we, we definitely lean and cling to a, a perfect God tonight. Uh, you know, it's, 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 I appreciate some of you who are kind of the latecomers. Uh, we are in 1 Peter chapter 1 this evening. 1 Peter chapter 1. Um, you, you'll notice when we've been talking about being tested, uh, tested by fire. Now, now here is something that I've noticed. Um, as we go through trials and the, the heat gets turned on and we're wondering sometimes, God, God, I don't know if I can handle this. This is too much heat. Um, you know, this is too much, much fire. I feel like I'm being consumed by that. Here is something that I've realized when it comes to a refiner and doing some studying on a refiner. Uh, the refiner is always in control of the heat that is coming in into our lives. Um, in fact, if you watch a refiner, uh, the refiner will actually continuously keep his eye on that fire and on what's happening in that pot as that those impurities are coming up. He, he doesn't like I did when I burned all that barbecue chicken. He, he doesn't do to where he takes his eyes off and he doesn't know what he's doing. No, no the refiner keeps his eye on the process. He, he understands how much heat can need to, 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 to raise up that heat and he knows when to turn that heat down. He, he knows how to get the impurities out and, and keep it so that that metal is not consumed. And so, so, so the, uh, the refiner never takes his eye off of the heat. He understands how much to apply right when he needs to apply it to purify and not destroy. 
Here's another thing. The refiner never takes his hand off of the work that he is doing. The refiner continuously works and he continuously moves and he continuously shapes in the ways that he needs to shape. He is constantly keeping his eye on the process, but he is also during that time, he is making sure that his hand is never removed from the process as well. And then this is another thing is, is that the refiner knows when that metal is where it needs to be, the gold, the silver, whatever it might be, and, and that he continuously removes the dross, the impurities, and he removes them to the place where when he looks into the pot, he actually begins to see his own reflection. Now listen, in these trials that we're going through, and I hope you're connecting the dots here, in these trials that we're going through, and, and for some of us, they needed to come into our lives, and the reason why they came is because we have to understand something. In the middle of the, the heat being turned up in our life, the Lord always has his eye on you. No, no, come on now. He, he always has his eye on you. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. Um, he, he knew the situation in the economy. He, he knew what's going on with health situations. He knows what's going on with relationships. He knows all those things. Why? Because he's never taken his eye off of you. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches all right, put it in the comments, okay? He, he watches over me. So he never loses sight of where you are, and he never takes his hand off of your life. Um, in Ephesians chapter 2, it says, We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God already prepared in advance for us to do. So we are his workmanship. God is at work. He, he never takes his hand off of, of your life. Now, we may wonder sometimes, well, 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 where is the Lord and, 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 and what is going on here until that heat gets turned up? And then we begin to seek his face. We begin to wonder what's happening. And, and one by one, he begins to remove those impurities. But that idea that the Lord will keep watching us and keep removing those impurities until he can see his reflection in us. Now that, that's... That's some really good stuff. You see, um, you were created to give God glory and more and more, this process is called sanctification, becoming more and more like Christ, to, to be sanctified, be set apart, to be made holy. So the Lord has been working in your life to remove some of that stuff out of your life so that in the end, you'll be more and more like Jesus. As Corinthians says, you'll be a reflection of the Lord. So. So you may be wondering, well, well, what is the purpose in this? What's the process in all this? Why, why, is, why are all these things being brought to the surface? Because one by one, the Lord wants to remove those things. One by one, he wants to take them out of your life so that in the end, you will reflect Jesus more and more. Can, can you imagine what that'll be like? That day that you get to see Jesus face to face. And, and you know... Some folks have said, well, you know what, man, your, your kids, you've marked your kids. They, they, they look a lot like you and stuff. And so, you know, younger pictures this and, you know, they have hair, but, I, you know, uh, but they say, hey, you know, you, you marked your kids. Wouldn't it be amazing? Can you just imagine on that day that we see Jesus Christ, that because of his work and because of the testing of our faith, uh, if you notice, it even says there um, in verse nine that receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls, wouldn't it be amazing that as we think about Jesus and when we get to see him face to face, uh, like it says there in verse, uh, verse seven and eight, um, that we'll honor glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, verse eight, whom having not seen you love, and though you do not see him now, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory. Wouldn't it be amazing? Can you just imagine when we get to see Jesus Christ face to face, and when we see him face to face, that we'll be a reflection of him. That we'll be just a, though dimly and though in a mirror, and, and though, though we fall short in so many ways, and there's so much work that he has left to do, wouldn't it be awesome to say, you know what, you, you look like your daddy. You look like your savior. You look like your father. Can you not imagine what that'll be like on that day? Well, for a moment, as we begin to, to, to close, and, and some of y'all who are here a little late, uh, I want you to rewind here in a little while once this, uh, once this is over and, and go back and listen to some of these words. Uh, listen for a moment as Jordan and his sister Lauren actually sing this song. It's called, um, I, I, can, I Can Only Imagine. 
And, and as they sing that, and, and I want you to take a moment to just pray and say, Lord, are you bringing anything to the surface? Lord, is there anything that is keeping me from becoming more and more like Jesus Christ? I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side and when I see you face to face. When that day comes, will you be more and more like Jesus? Listen, listen as they sing. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk. I can only imagine what I'll have seen when your face is before me. I can only imagine Just imagine what that will be like on that day. And so the Lord is, is working in your life right now. Even through these trials and through these difficult times, the Lord is working in your life and he's letting these trials in your life so that one by one he can remove some of those things in your life. Amen. I mean, there are, there are some things in your life and in my life that, that if we get down to the surface and to the root of the problem, then we'll begin to realize that, hey, uh, there, there are some things that God had to remove out of my life, strip away some of the things that when my attitude and my actions and my mouth and, and my, my priorities and, and, and the things that I've held on to that have become idols in my life, he had to remove those things so that now I can see that the genuineness of my faith, the testing of my faith, has proved that, you know what, there is a real relationship with God. In the end, He is enough. He is all that I need. And so I hope that you've been allowing the Lord to remove the stuff out of your life. You can decide. I'm going to be bitter. 
I'm going to be angry. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let the Lord do his work in my life. Or you can say, you know what, I'm going to let him change me during this time. I'm going to let him get to the root of the issue. Now, as we think about this idea of the root cause and those things that are being brought to the surface, um, Brother Michael is going to share with us uh, just real quick an idea of what is at the root and how do we make sure that we're rooted and grounded in our faith. I think this will be practical uh, advice for us tonight as we, we listen. And, and Brother Michael, and some of you who have teenage boys and, um, and you know, you're trying to figure out how do I, I get them involved and closer to the Lord, uh, you may want to consider the truth in nature, but, but here, listen to this devotional as Brother Michael leads us on how we can get to the root cause of things that are going on in our lives. Hey guys, check out this root ball from where this tree fell over and all the roots come up out of the ground. It's pretty cool. What do you think caused this to happen? Maybe some high winds or, or maybe its branches were too heavy or, or the ground had gotten too wet around it or maybe it was a combination of all three of those. Those would all be good answers. But what is the root cause of what happened to this tree? Well, the roots, they weren't big enough. They weren't strong enough and they weren't deep enough. Hey guys, it's Michael Rivers with Truth in Nature. Man, that root ball that we were looking at was super cool. The tree fell over and the whole root system just stood up in the air like that. You could see all the roots and it made a big hole in the ground. That was super cool. But I wanted to talk to you guys a little more today about a root system. And I wanted to start in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. And this is part of the parable of the sower. And, and this is Jesus talking. And Jesus said, Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. And since they had no root, they withered away. You see, roots are a vital part of a plant's life. A good root system uh, is something that they need to survive. You know, the plants that Jesus was talking about here, they were growing on rocky ground and their, their roots were shallow and they were weak and they couldn't uh, absorb enough moisture to sustain the plants. And, and often uh, when we find plants like that with those shallow, weak uh, root systems, what happens is when, when the winds and the rains and the storms come, uh, those trees will end up like the one at the beginning of this video. They'll fall over, uh, uprooting the, the roots out of the ground, uh, and eventually they'll die. Uh, but what does that mean for us and our walk with Christ? Well, Jesus uh, explains that a little further down in chapter 13. Uh, in verse 20 and 21, Jesus says, As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. And when tribulation and persecution arise on account of the word, on the account of the word, immediately he falls away. Yet it said, Yet he has no root in himself and immediately he falls away. You see, roots are not only vital in a plant's life, but they're also vital in a believer's life. Just as the plant roots grow deep in the soil for stability and, and nourishment, uh, so should our faith grow, grow deep into sound biblical doctrine and, and spiritual nourishment that can only come with a relationship, uh, with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, uh, this is... Uh, the well-nourished roots that we need that will last forever and ever. You know, in Colossians chapter uh, 2, verse 6 and 7, it says, Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught. You see, in Christ, we find that life-giving soil, that uh, sustainable foundation that we need and we all need a good, solid, ever-growing root system that reaches deep down into the spiritual soil uh, for nourishment and sustainability that, that God so graciously gives us in His Word. You know, our lives should be deeply rooted in Christ so we can withstand those storms when they come. And believe me, those storms will come. But when those storms come, how do, how do we withstand them? Well, just what we've been talking about. We have to grow bigger, stronger, deeper root systems. 
Well, how do we grow those bigger, stronger, deeper root systems? Well, we do that by spending time uh, in God's Word, by spending time studying God's Word, by spending time reading God's Word. And we also do that by spending time uh, talking to God in prayer. But, you know, this isn't a one-time thing. It's a lifelong pursuit, a daily pursuit of Christ. When we stop pursuing Christ, our roots not only stop growing, but they begin to shrink. They begin to rot. They begin to decay. And when that happens, we become unstable and we become unable to uh, withstand those storms when they come. And like I said, those storms will come. So are you rooted in Christ? Are you growing deeper roots in Christ? Have you ever started a root system by placing your faith in Jesus Christ? If you've never started that root system by placing your faith in Jesus Christ, I would love to talk to you more about that. Uh, You can call me. My number will be here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, Or you can call one of your local program directors. They would love to talk to you about that. But guys, we are so ready to get back to our regular programming. We are missing you guys like crazy. Uh, We want to be able to be with you guys. Um, But as you know, right now, it's just not possible. Uh, But we are looking forward to the day that we can do that. This is going on much longer than uh, we uh, thought it would. Uh, But just know, guys, we are thanking of you guys every day. We are praying for you guys. We love you. We miss you. We can't wait until we can be face-to-face again. And guys, always remember, tight lines, steady aim, and a cleansed heart. Jesus loves you, and we'll see you soon. Well, amen. Well, look, uh, I thank you so much for being here this evening. I hope that you'll be rooted in Christ. You know, you've been created in God's image. Sin comes and mars and destroys that image. But through a relationship with Jesus Christ, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, he begins to work in your life. So now that he is recreating you, he is renewing you. You are, when you give your life to Christ, you are born again. So that in the end, you could reflect the image of, of Jesus Christ himself and become more and more like him. And so as the heat is turned up this week, as the fire begins to rage around you, would you remember, God has his eye on me. He's not going to let go of me. And in the end, he's removing things out of my life so that I realize I can become more and more like Jesus Christ. Well, friends, look, as we close with this song, um, there's a song that uh, Brother Waylon's going to be singing, um, but you'll notice the pictures and the images that are going to be scrolling across are from our friends at the nursing home. If, if you missed this past week, a time of prayer um, as we prayed for Rest Haven and as we just began to spend some time uh, with those residents, even as we drove by, uh, th- this ought to be a blessing to you. So a- as we close in prayer tonight, would you, as you see these images cr- uh, flash across the screen, would you remember the least of us among us? Would you remember some of those folks who who are there in the nursing home, some of those folks who are struggling financially, some of those folks that are in your family that are going through some really difficult times? Would you remember as well our healthcare workers? You know, every morning at 9-11 and every evening at 9-11 p.m., uh, we've been spending time praying for those who who at this time, if you call 911, they're going to respond. It could be our police officers. It could be our EMTs. It could be those who are our fire department. It could be those who are our healthcare workers. Just whoever's going to respond as a result of calling 911, we want to pray for them every morning, every night. So so you be praying for one another. If you have any prayer, uh, prayer requests right now, Feel free to drop them in the uh, in the comments below. We want to lift one another up in prayer. Thanks for being here tonight. Um, and then at the end, if you missed the little uh, come apart that the preacher had this week, uh, it'll be bonus material. But Miss Debbie Bobman will be playing as well. So a- after our time at Rest Haven, uh, you go ahead and listen to that as well. Lord bless you guys. Lord keep you. May His face shine upon you and give you His rest. Father, I thank you for each person here tonight. I pray, Lord, guys, they spend some time just listening to you and praying to you. That tonight would be a night that they just say, Lord, have your way in my life. Lord, I surrender it all to you. And Lord, whatever you need to remove from my life, may I be willing to just say, not my will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord bless you guys. See you soon. If I surveyed all of the good
the things that come to me from above If I count all the blessings from the storehouse of love I'd simply ask for a favor of him beyond mortal kings And I'm sure that he'd grant it again I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day When all our troubles and heartaches are vanished away And then we'll enjoy the beauty Where all things are new I want to stroll over heaven with you So many places of beauty we long to see here below But times and treasures have kept us From making plans as you know But come the morning of the rapture Together we'll stand anew While I stroll over heaven with you I want to stroll over heaven with you some glad day When all our troubles and heartaches are vanished away And then we'll enjoy the beauty where all things are new I want to stroll over Troubles and heartaches are vanished away And then we'll enjoy the beauty Where all things are new I want to stroll over heaven with you I want to stroll over Did you see the date? No, for real. Did you see the date? Did you see the date? Did you look at the date that the governor just said? Did you see the date? I mean, are, are you serious? May 15th? We got to go through this and that's just the beginning? We got to go through this till May 15th? Did you see the date? Did you see the date? Are you mad? Are you furious? Are you angry? Are you sad? Are you depressed? Are you just like, man, come on, this is too much. I am tired of all of this. Look at this face. This is a tired face. You got a tired face? Do you? Sh sh I mean, show me a picture of your tired face. Are you, aren't you just tired of all of this? 
And so, preacher, why you get on here acting all mad and all upset and all just crazy with your voice acting like that? Say, so what did that mean? We, <laughs> we, we wave a white flag. We surrender or we give it all to you. Friends, I, I know that this right here, um, for some of you, who are business owners, for some of you who are concerned about our economy, for some of you who are worried about your health and your family's health and still trying to be socially distant, were you just tired of all this? So what, what is the preacher saying? We wave our white flag. We surrender all to you. That's not just preacher talk on Sunday mornings, not just times that, you know what, hey, this would be a good sermon. Watch this. I'm going to wave this flag. No, it's it's... It's saying, you know what, Jesus, not my will, but yours be done. But Lord, if your will is going to be done, you've got to carry a brother. You've got to hold on tight because as much as I want your will, Lord, to be done in my life, this is too much. This is right here, this is too much. And so what do I do? I do like Jesus in the middle of stress and trouble and distress and times of my face. I mean, I, I got a mean face. Just say, Lord, <laughs> Jesus, I surrender. Your timing is not my timing. Your ways are not my ways. And what you want to do in my life right now, Lord, have your way. Don't waste this crisis. Let Jesus Christ move and work in your life. It is going to be, what is it? be okay is it gonna be nice and fun nah this ain't it I love hanging out I love being on the computer I love chilling with my family but this is crazy but if it's over my head it's under his feet God is at work he's in control let him be in control of your life today so before you go to bed tonight when you got this like, would you just simply say, Lord, oh, not my will, but yours be done. Amen? Amen. Well, I just figured I'd come out here real quick. I had to yell outside the house because I didn't want them to be like, you know, why y'all yelling at me? All right. Pastor's praying for you. If you need anything, holler at me. Just know we're going to make it through this together. What do we do?